probably a piece of show up around here. Yeah. Self show of the lights in the day. It's definitely. Gold State Warrior. MVP. Playing golf out here. Closer to the rail. Right here in the store for Black Tiger City Golf. I think I'm in the same way. No, I think I'm Excuse me. That's all. Steph Curry, Mike's a golf player. That's it. That's all in 19. All in 19. All Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Langston Golf Course. My name is Kerry Davis. I'm the athletic director here at Howard University. What began as a random conversation 
between two young people passionate about the game of golf has ended up here, the announcement of one of the most generous gifts in the, in the history of Howard University. To talk more about that, I want to bring up the man who sets the strategy and who sets the goals for our, not, only the, not only our athletic department, but the university as a whole. Our 17th president, Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick. Good morning. Th thanks for joining us uh, today. Today is obviously a historic opportunity for not just Howard, but I think uh, all historically black colleges and universities. One of the things that we've been trying to do at Howard is to make the case that Howard University, like many of our HBCUs, have really given this country a significant return on investment. And one of the things that we're asking uh, the country as a whole to do is to reinvest in us. And I think that that reinvestment is going to pay big dividends. Howard University was founded on March 2nd, 1867. And that act of Congress that started this university was a very ambitious start. This university was founded five years after Freedom's Hospital was put on Howard's campus to basically give free slaves a place to go get health care. And that emerged into a bigger opportunity for free slaves to be educated. And not just educated, but educated at the highest level possible. And so everything that we've been doing has been focused on that. Howard University has produced more African-American physicians than any other institution in this country. And if you look over the past 50 years at all of the black graduates at Harvard's MBA, their number one supplier of those black graduates was Harvard College, number two was Howard University. There's no field in this country that Howard University doesn't, diver that doesn't diversify. So what we do as an academic institution is critical. And athletics here at Howard University is extremely important. My freshman year, my first semester, I got to manage a soccer team, and we went all the way to the Division I Final Four. So my introduction to sports at Howard University as well was at, at the highest level. So as you can imagine, in the spring, when March Madness started, I turned on the TV looking for Howard. Unfortunately, they weren't there just yet. But when I hired Kerry, I told him clearly that that's where we need to be. So we clearly are making a strong investment. And so today, for instance, my best friend is here, Shaka Hislop, who played on that team. Uh, that 1988 team that went to the Division One Final Four and played in the championship game. He graduated from the engineering school, turned in his class, interned at NASA, and played 14 years in the English Premiership for teams like Newcastle and Reading. So clearly, an elite athlete. Uh, played in MLS for two years, and now was an ESPN broadcast. And probably the most important accomplishment he has is an executive MBA that I got the chance to sign as president. Although his kids think it was good feeding on his degree, but that's how it goes. So we're here because of this investment that we want to make. So I want to take an opportunity, as much as we're going to talk about golf, I want to take an opportunity to mention a couple of things. We have our, our tennis coach here today, Larry Strickland, and come January 1st, 2020, by the grace of God, he would have coached at Howard University in five different decades and in every decade would have sent an academic All-American, uh, produced an academic All-American. So, <laughs> Nick Askew is here today as well. He's uh, our head coach for swimming and diving. We have the only uh, swim team uh, in the, at, at an HBCU right now in the country. So I also want to thank Nick for what he does. <laughs> David Oliver is here, my director of, of track and field, and David himself is an Olympian, uh, won a medal, uh, not just any medal, but uh, won the championship in the Olympics, and so we're thankful for uh, what David does. Again, another elite coach and an elite athlete that we have here at the university. <laughs> Our women's volleyball made it to the playoffs the last two years and I think continues to have a very strong team, so I thank Sean uh, for his leadership of that program as well. Hold on, four, four, four years. Oh, four years ago, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, four years ago, I, yeah, he probably is going to duck my pay for that. So, so I want to thank Sean for that. And our newest, our newest member of the coaching staff is here, Kenny, uh, Kenny Blakeney from the 
uh, men's basketball team. I got a chance to go to Spain this weekend and watch them play. Uh, they played in Barcelona twice and won, and then they played in Valencia uh, on, on Saturday night and won. And I got to tell you, uh, Mr. Curry, I hope that you're playing long enough because a couple of the members of this team could probably join your team. So I'm <laughs> thankful, thankful for him. I want to also address uh, Mr. Curry. You know, we, we had a very interesting time in our country, and our nation's history, there's no doubt about that. There's a lot for us to be cynical about, a lot for us to be disappointed by, especially in terms of the rhetoric. But one of the things that I think we all must make sure that we double down on is investing in the people who invest in us. And one of the things that we have to take pause today amongst everything else that's happening is to realize that Mr. Curry represents what is great about America. If you want to talk about American greatness and you want to talk about what Americans should be doing regardless of their station in life, I think you just need to look at what Mr. Curry has been doing off the court. We're not even talking about on the court. When he brought Emmanuel to Howard, um, it was an emotional night. But his investment, uh, meeting his mom, seeing his family's investment in that project was unbelievable. And then again today, what, there's so many other things that he could be doing today. There's so many other schools that he could be at supporting something like this today. But he chose to be here for a reason. His social activism, without political rhetoric, speaks volumes to who he is. And I hope that in all of the cynicism that we sometimes see and hear every day, we're going to take pause today to recognize that there's a lot to be happy about in this country with people like Stephen Curry around. So, Mr. Curry. Let me be clear, this is not just an investment in athletics. Howard's academics in our athletics program is key. The one thing that we are proud of when people ask me about our competitiveness, I make it clear, we're competitive on the field, but more, just as importantly, if not more importantly, we're competitive in the classroom. The young men and young women who participate in Howard Athletics are some of the brightest people you will meet, people who are out changing the country, changing the world around us. So, this investment is clearly that. This is an avenue for students who otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to attend a Howard University to use the game of golf to participate in that. And for that, I'm also grateful. I'm also grateful that he recognizes the value of that education. I wouldn't be here and wouldn't be able to support this effort if it wasn't for a few people I want to mention. The chair elect of my board is here, Larry Moss. And another trustee, John Christian as well. Both have been very supportive of what we've been trying to do and I'm appreciative that they're here today. Uh, Marie Johns, uh, who many in DC know is also on our board. Uh, today's her birthday, so I also want to thank her for uh, her support as well that she's been able to our So I told Steph that my handicap is golf. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I love the game. And I probably play it way too often at a poor level. But I love it because it's the one thing that I get to do with my son that puts me in complete isolation for over four hours. I played, I would say, 80 to 90% of the rounds of golf I've played in my life with my son, who just turned 15. He has two days today as he's joining the varsity soccer team at high school, so he's going to come probably on the back nine. He is right handed, right hand dominant, but he plays lefty. And when he shows up, I'm going to get a knee injury so that I can make an excuse for why he's now driving me from the same tee box. But more importantly, it has given us an opportunity to share something that we can share well into the later years of my life. And also something that I can share, hopefully, with my grandchildren. And that's the thing about golf that I love. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can play the sport, and it teaches you a lot about life, about self-regulating yourself, about accountability, about responsibility. You don't have to... Somebody doesn't have to see you do something for you to call that penalty on yourself. And I think golf gives a lot uh, around the issues of integrity. And so bringing the sport to Howard as well, from a competitive point of view, is great. But another major part of this is going to be bringing the sport to several other Howard University students uh, who can participate and then play with their families, play with businessmen and women as well, and participate and see where deals are made. And I think that's just as critical. So with that in mind as well, I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Chip Brewer, who's here with us, the CEO of, of Callaway, for his generous support. <laughs> so Mr. Curry, one of the things that I think you'll be proud of is that 
I hope you get to meet every young man and woman who plays uh, on Howard's golf team in the future. And I think you'll see what I see every day. The best advocates man for what is right about this country exists in my school. I think when you meet those young men and women and you see what they're doing, where they're coming from, I think you're going to be very, very proud that you made this type of investment. So I want to thank you very, very much for that. The other thing I want to assure you is that Howard Athletics will always run a clean, compliant program. It will always be competitive, and I think the young men and women that will participate will always be outstanding citizens and will always do the right thing. And last but not least, I want to thank Kerry Davis, the athletic director. My vision when I bought Kerry uh, to Howard University was to transform what we did in sports. I wanted to see the same thing I saw the first semester I was here uh, in all of the sports teams. And one of the things I think he's done a good job is trying to manage, making sure that we give uh, full support to everyone in the team. So I want to thank him. I want to take the opportunity as well to thank Paul Bowden and David Bennett, uh, both of whom uh, would not have both of whom uh, made this deal happen in terms of working out the details and sometimes those folks behind the scenes we don't give them enough recognition so let's give a round of applause to them. I understand some cameras are going to follow us for the first few holes so I just want to make it clear the only four letter words we're going to use are four uh, this is the only four that we use. I, mean, I asked the cameras to back up. This is not the PGA. Uh, our liability, my lawyers are here. Our liability is not. So it's not at least not when I'm hitting. I don't know about this insurance, but when I'm hitting, you're going to give me an extra 20 yards. So thanks very much for coming out today. And again, thanks, Mr. Curry. I've learned uh, when I speak after the president speaks to keep my brief short because he's such an incredible orator, it's hard to follow. But, but with that in mind, uh, the person I am going to introduce next doesn't need very many words from me. There are very few people in sports who affect the world, who in effect, people talk about changing the game. He changes the world. I, when I was growing up, uh, I think it was. Coke or Pepsi, one of them ran, or Nike, ran a, ran a commercial, I want to be like Mike. Well now, every young man who grows up, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what their stage in life is, right, they want to be like Steph. Because he brings that every person quality to not just sports, but to the world. He is a three-time NBA champion. He is a two-time MVP, the only unanimous MVP in the history of the NBA. He is a six-time All-Star, but more than that, he's a tech entrepreneur, he's an entertainment executive producer, he is a philanthropist, and he runs a foundation uh, that will reach out to all of us to be as inclusive as we possibly can be. He's going to be growing golf, and not only that, but bringing it to all minority communities, which is one of the great reasons of being here and launching this event at, at Langston to begin with. So with that in mind, uh, I bring you Mr. Stefan Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I like to talk like this. This is much better. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, it's a pretty exciting day, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I've been yeah. looking forward to this for a very long time, since, well, since January, I should say. Um, quick backstory while we're all here. Um, Otis Ferguson, the fourth, is sitting right here uh, in the front row. Otis, stand up for him right quick. Oh, yeah. The camera's about to go on so many You can stand up while I'm talking about you. So Otis um, is the representation of everything Dr. Frederick said about what it means to be here at Howard, be a student here. Um, I came on campus for the first time to, uh, to share a documentary we have been working on with Unanimous called uh, Emmanuel. It says a very heavy story, has a lot of lessons and, and thought provoking kind of you know, pieces to it. And as we did our panel discussion, um, as soon as we were done, we had a, a moment where I got to share with all the students that came and they kind of came up to the front of the stage and I started on the left and made my way down to the right. And every student had, 
a passion, a vision, something that was on their mind that they wanted to do to change either something at Howard or something that they wanted to do after they left school or something they wanted to do to change the world, something in the community. Uh, and hearing each and every one of their stories was, was empowering and encouraging in terms of um, just what, what they each were doing in their own particular lives to make a difference. Otis reconnected on golf. And in terms of you know, our passion for the game, I think I can speak for you about what the game has taught both of us um, in terms of who we are, things that Dr. Frederick said as well, around accountability, around competition, uh, discipline, all those different, different ideals of learning through the game of golf. And uh, I know Otis talked about wanting to you know, start a, a golf club here. And he, had, he was sitting out flyers trying to meet, have people come to a, a room on Howard's campus and just get people interested in the game. Uh, but he wanted to take it to another level. And the idea around recreating Howard's golf team, turning it into a Division One program for men and women, was born on that, that specific night. And you know, seven and a half, eight months later, we are here announcing the first Division One golf program for Howard University, all because of this guy right here. So y'all give it up. Yeah. Uh, it's it's extremely rewarding to be here. Uh, I know, again, what the game of golf has taught me. Obviously, I played basketball full time and have enjoyed that that part of my or that career path. But in terms of what golf has has taught me about the different places it takes you, the things it teaches you about yourself, the people that you get to play with. Um, as I said, it's a family thing for me as well. My dad got me into the game when I was ten years old, and. Uh, a high percentage of my rounds have been with him as well. Uh, bridging that part of you know, my relationship with the game into creating this opportunity with Howard to provide scholarships for men and women to play the game, to go to Howard, to invest in that, the education, um, and be a part of this amazing, amazing university that I've, I've heard so many great things about. Um, it's just exciting to, to, to be a part of that, that, that mission, that journey, that process. And, you know, as a part of the game, it doesn't just happen because of me um, or Otis. We have a lot of great partners that have helped bring this to, to fruition. Obviously, Under Armour being uh, a sponsor from a, you know, apparel for, for the team. Callaway is here as well. Uh, committed to giving equipment for the teams as well. Uh, yeah, give it up for Callaway. That's, that's huge. That's huge. So a total team effort all the way across the board to make this a possibility. The biggest part about it that I'm excited about, not only are we creating scholarships um, and create opportunity you know, for this, this program to compete in the, in the world of golf, uh, as a part of being on the, the Howard Golf Team, my wife and I, we just started our, our foundation uh, called Eat, Learn, Play. And we're helping kids starting in the Bay Area, especially in the Oakland community, Help them eat better, uh, learn more, and uh, create healthy, or create safe places for them to play in terms of their uh, active lifestyles. Part of being on the Howard Golf Team is uh, there's going to be a requirement to uh, to volunteer uh, a certain amount of time here in the in the local DC area uh, through those through programs in those three areas. So it kind of goes full range into developing the total person, obviously, from an athletics perspective, from an educational perspective, and from a philanthropic perspective. So I'm extremely happy to bring part of, the, of you know, what makes me who I am, my family as well, to that program. And uh, just excited. I'm going to be following every, you know, every part of the journey as we go into next year when, we, when the team takes the course for the first time. Um, but this is a big day, so hopefully the news spreads amazingly. Hopefully we create opportunities you know, not, uh, for the, those men and women who are going to be the first on this golf team to you know, make this an every year thing where we're competing at a very high level. And I'm uh, just excited. Being here at Langston, thank you for hosting us. Uh, I know the, the true history here um, in terms of golf and the connection with the community. So uh, I'm just excited. I'm ready to, ready to get this thing started off with a bang. And again, Otis talks about speaking things to, to an existence, not knowing if it's going to happen or not. There's a lesson in that, so thank you for doing that. Um, this is going to go way beyond the game of golf, way beyond Howard. This is this is huge, so thank y'all for including me, and I'm um, happy to be here. Thank you very much.
We are going to um, pause and get official photos in just a second, but we do want to give our professional press an opportunity to ask some questions. <laughs> yeah, Otis wants to say something. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, they, they pretty much summed everything up. Um, to be honest, I, I just, this is an amazing opportunity, an amazing moment just to have um, a lot of the people who are closest to me here see it um, and, and just, you know, have this, this moment to be here in D.C. and, and kind of have my two worlds, which is, you know, the back home and golf side and, and the D.C. Howard side collide and, and um, obviously with some support <laughs> from, from, from Howard as well and, 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 and a big time uh NBA superstar, uh, it just, it, it's, it's unbelievable, it's awesome, and I just want to thank God, because without him, none of this would be possible, um, just like, it's really, I mean, um, that, just that moment of, of going there to the, the panel, and, or the, the screening, um, just hearing the panel discussion, it, I honestly felt like I was walking into a Bible study, um, but, but it's just, you know, that moment, I couldn't have done it on my own, couldn't have made it happen, and, and how it's come along, like you said, seven months later is just just awesome. So I just want to thank everybody um, again for coming out and uh, look forward to seeing how this how this unfolds. I would be remiss if I didn't include a couple of other thank yous. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Steph's uh, Steph's team uh, from SC30. Uh, Ryan Barr and Jerron Smith, you guys uh, are terrific. You were terrific to work for, passionate, knowledgeable, reasonable. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it was really, it was really a, a joy to work with. I also want to thank uh, uh, your, your both your PR staff. Janice Lee is representing them here. Uh, she's somewhere around, and also there, there she is. Uh, absolutely, she did a terrific job. Um, and um, and his legal team, Scott McKinney, I believe, is here. And it was just oftentimes lawyers get in the way of these kinds of deals. Scott was was one of again one of those people who worked hard to know that everybody had their hearts in the right place and let's make this thing happen. So with that in mind, uh, thank you again to my staff. There are too many to name, but you guys all know who you are. Right off getting here and working so hard while I was in Spain, I really appreciate that. Uh, and with that, I'll open it up to questions from Ms. Press. Yeah. I'm Michael Fletcher from Undefeated. Just a couple of technical points. How many scholarships do you envision creating for the golf team? And how much do you think it's going to cost to endow it going forward after this year? Uh, two good questions. Uh, the first is, uh, in the beginning, we're going to start with three scholarships in total. Uh, two on the women's side and one on the men's side. But there might be in the first year, we're still working through the uh, particulars of this, there might in the first year be two scholarships based on this uh, separate situation that involves Mr. Ferguson. Right, but I can't get into any more details on that. Um, with regard to the endowment, uh, we're going to look, uh, Steph has agreed uh, to work with us in terms of raising the funds for the endowment so that this program can go on in, in, in perpetuity. Uh, that number could be, you know, I'm not going to put a limit on what that number is, but we're looking at somewhere between six to eight million. And full scholarships? Full scholarships, correct. Sam Ford, Channel 7. How much uh, is Mr. Curry putting up for this? How much does this cost? The six, the, the six well, years of support? I, I don't like to talk about any other anybody else's wallet, but let me just say this. Um, he is putting up enough that we will be able to, in the first year, uh, hire a coach and do the necessary, uh, spend the necessary resources to cre create and develop a team starting in 2021. Uh, he is also putting up enough to pay the operating expenses and the scholarship expenses for that for that team on both the men's and women's side for the next five years after that. How much is that? I'm not going to say how much that is. <laughs> but put it like this, it's, it, it, it's more than a little. <laughs> yes. Radio, what's the plan to get more women involved in golf? What's the 
So that's that's also also a very good question. One of the things that Steph was very uh, uh, adamant about was having gender equality uh, and gender equity based on the program. So we will have, as, as a matter of fact, there'll be, again, one more women's scholarship than there'll be a men's scholarship. The idea uh, for women's competition is uh, they will be an independent team probably starting out in 2021 with the hope of eventually joining the MEAC conference should the MEAC conference gain enough institutions uh, to host a Division I program. The, the MEAC does have a Division I program for men and the men will immediately be a part of the Division I mix uh, on the MEAC side in, in 2020. Well, Amari. Uh, yeah, a lot of professional athletes play golf and you hope that this also awesome inspire them uh, to follow your lead. Um, yes, I feel like uh, there's no secret how much golf is a passion of mine and again, how much I've learned about the game kind of playing basketball obviously full time and you know, my free time playing golf but uh, I hope it encourages people in terms of just being authentic about what they want to do and how they can create opportunities to give back. You don't have to force it uh, opportunities can come up but following you know your passions and what you can really get behind not only you know, your time and effort but your money as well um, everybody's doing it in a lot of different ways and so my way is connecting golf with education with opportunity and that is uh, that's important for me question in the green. Mark Frederick, Apple, American newspaper. Steph, uh, in relation to Chris Broussard's comments last week about, uh, you know, black players, the high school level, going to HBCU. This is kind of an extension of that. As one who's in the 10 to HBCU, Tom Ford's didn't see that scenario. I know Dr. Frederick probably has something to say about that, but I think uh, I didn't. I saw Chris's comments, but this is obviously in the worst since January. Um, I know Jerron, who, uh, who was a Howard alum, and has, you know, spoke a lot about you know, this, uh, this university as a whole and what it stands for, what it means. But again, you don't have to go to an HBCU to support it. And so for me, uh, this is an opportunity and it's something following Otis's lead I wanted to get behind. Um, and the university has done a great job of meeting me halfway on that. So uh, there's a lot to say. The uniqueness and specialness of people that you know that, that come from uh, HBCUs that are doing, like you said, are changing the world um, in, in their own respective ways, and it's, it's important. You want to speak on that too? Just one comment, and that is, I think you know, often when this comes up, we just aren't honest about the issue. The issue is about money. Uh, you got the young African American athletes who are going to be attracted to you know places and sports where they can be seen and where they can make it to the other level, and so. As HBCUs, we also have a responsibility to build the infrastructure so that we can convince them, we can give them that opportunity. I think one of the things that I would say, though, to those young African American athletes as well, is we give them probably the best opportunity in life. Uh, while a small percentage of them will make it to the pros, the reality is all of them better live a, a, a life, a productive life outside of the sports arena. And I don't think you get a better education outside of an HBCU. So for any student athlete considering where to go, uh, you know, I think HBCU is a good choice. Everyone, um, at this time, we are going to pause for a second, move this podium, and get some shots for our professional photographers. After we're done with shots in here, um, professional photographers will be able to join us at the first hole to um, get a commemorative shot there. One second, please. Hey, Davis, 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 Davis.